Little brown jobs are basically sparrows and finches. In our previous video, we featured 15 different sparrow species. In this video, we'll be talking about the other family of little brown jobs, the finches. Although some finches are small and brown, many are actually quite colorful. We will also include finch-like species like grosbeaks, buntings, crossbills, and cardinals. Interesting thing about these types of birds is that many of them are regularly seen as couples. When you see a finch, you almost always see its mate close by. Many of these species also form small flocks during the non-mating season. As in the previous video, we will be showing finches that reside or pass through our area in Ontario, Canada. However, many of these species can be found throughout North America and other parts of the world. The male purple finch looks like a little brown job that's been dipped in red ink. The female looks like a standard little brown job with her brown on white streaked breast. They breed right across Canada and some northern parts of the USA. Many of the purple finches who live in our area around the Great Lakes and eastward don't migrate but they will travel around to find food in the winter. Purple finches eat mainly seeds from coniferous trees and some plant seeds. In the summer, they will also eat insects. Purple finches have been declining and are getting to be a rare sighting these days. Some of the decline is due to the competition with the introduced house finch and house sparrow, which has driven them deeper into the backwoods. The male purple finch and the house finch are very similar and often confuse bird watchers. But there are some obvious differences. The purple finch has more red spread throughout its body, and the house finch has definite brown streaks on its breast. The female purple finch has a thick brown stripe from its beak to beyond her eye, while the female house finch is a fully streaked bird. In our area, the house finch has been recently introduced. They are originally from the southwest. New York pet shop owners started selling them as Hollywood finches. This practice was illegal and some of the shop owners released them to escape fines. Some of them survived and over the years their range has expanded and soon the eastern population reached across the continent and they are now common throughout. Like many finches, the diet is mostly seeds, berries and buds. They are regular visitors to many of our backyard feeders. The American goldfinch has two very different phases. In the summer, they are bright yellow with a black forehead and black wings with bright white bars. In the winter, they are an olive brown with a tinge of yellow. The wings are still black but not as bold. The female follow the same pattern except not as intense and without the black forehead in the summer. Goldfinches are entirely vegetarian and enjoy an abundant food supply for much of the year, including seeds of thistles, dandelions, asters, and sunflowers. They are late nesters and don't nest until midsummer when the thistles and other weeds have gone to seed. They are also common among the birds that regularly visit our backyard feeders. Their songs and calls are incredibly cute. Common and hoary red poles are little brown jobs with a bright red forehead. Mature males also have a reddish breast. The hoary red pole looks like the common, but are often paler and have a smaller bill. These Arctic breeders spend the summer in the treeless tundra. Being ground feeders is therefore no surprise. We only see them in the winter when they flock and come south to feed in the open woods, weedy fields, and occasionally our backyard feeders. Red poles eat mainly small tree seeds as well as those of grasses, seeds, and wildflowers. During the summer, they will also eat insects and spiders. An interesting fact is that in the winter, some red poles roost in tunnels under the snow, where the snow provides insulation and keeps them warm during those cold nights.
The pine siskin is another true little brown job. They are brown streaked overall, with yellow on its wings and tails. They have small eyes and a pointed beak, and the males and females are similar. Siskins mostly feed on seed and small insects. They prefer small seeds, especially thistles and small tree seeds. Pine siskins are nomadic finches and they tend to follow the seed crops in the winter. Most winters, they are absent from our backyard feeders. However, every few years, we do get a short visit and that can be very exciting. Another bird that summers in the high Arctic is the aptly named snow bunting. In the summer, the male is bright white with black and white wings. We have never witnessed them in this phase as they spend their nesting season in the extreme northern Arctic. In the winter, they group in flocks and take on a rusty brown on white look to help them blend in on the ground. As can be expected, snow buntings spend all their time on the ground when not in flight. Snow buntings are seen in our area only in the winter. Most of the time, they are very skittish and the flock will take off when you approach and land about 100 yards away. The rest of the birds we will be showcasing are much more colorful, starting with the unmistakable indigo bunting. The male is all blue with a little bit of black on their wingtips. The females are a light brown. The blue color of the males actually comes from microscopic structures in the feathers that refract and reflect blue light. In our area, indigo buntings are a rare sighting. They are only here for a few months in the spring and summer. Anytime we see them, it's very exciting because these birds are simply gorgeous. Red and white winged crossbills may be some of the most unusual birds that we have seen in our area. They have specialized bills for eating the seeds in pine, hemlock, Douglas fir, and spruce cones. Their bills have adapted very differently from other finches to allow them to break into cones to get at the seeds. Because conifer seeds production is unpredictable, the birds are nomads and will wander to find food. This is why we see them one year and not see them at all in other years. Crossbills often come to the ground to consume grit along the roadsides. This can be a deadly practice for them with the high speed cars and trucks on the highways. One year we see many fatalities along the highway. The victims didn't lay around too long as the ravens and crows watched from the power lines and took advantage of the easy meals. Pine grosbeaks closely resemble white winged crossbills. Only instead of crossbills, these finches have adapted large strong bills to allow them to crush seeds. Nearly 100% of their diet is made up of buds, seeds, and fruits from trees. In the winter, they also eat the grit and salt along the roadsides. Pine grosbeaks beaks live in the northern boreal forest and are also nomads as they do have to find foods where the seeds are abundant. They forage by hopping from branch to branch, nipping off fresh buds and needles, as well as on the ground grabbing the fallen seeds. During the winter months, they form small groups and travel together searching for seeds and fruits. Evening grosbeak is a large, colorful finch that is beautiful among the winter scenery when they are around, as they tend to be irregular winter migrants. The males are yellow and black with a very distinctive white patch on the wings. The females aren't as bright, but are still quite beautiful. They are mostly gray with black and white wings with a yellow tinge on their neck and shoulders. Evening grosbeaks breed in mature and second growth coniferous forests. 
In the non-breeding season, they usually forage in flocks. The spruce budworm is a favorite food for them, making them a very beneficial bird during the infestations. While many of the finches we've covered here are mainly seen in the winter, the rose-breasted grosbeak is a finch we only have the pleasure of seeing in the warmer months, as they prefer to spend their winters in the tropics. While the male is a vibrant black and white with a bright colored red triangle on his breast, the female has lovely shades of brown and yellow and a distinctive white eyebrow. The song of the rose-breasted grosbeak sounds like an exciting robin who drank too much caffeine. In early spring, we often have them visit our urban backyard feeders. However, they don't stay long, just long enough to fuel up and they're off to their summer territories. They like to nest in open deciduous forest and parklands. The northern cardinal is a favorite bird to many people because of the gorgeous colors of both the male and female. They are very popular as backyard feeder attractions. If you see one, the mate is almost always somewhere nearby. This is because the pairs have a very strong bond and stay together year round. During the courtship, the male sometimes collects foods and brings it to the female, feeding her beak to beak. He may continue bringing her food while she is nesting. The male cardinal has many beautiful calls, and around where we live, he starts his morning singing as early as late February, just as the days start to get noticeably longer. Like many birds, cardinals molt their feathers and grow new ones in late summer after the breeding season is over and the time when the food is abundant. I hope you enjoyed this episode featuring a few of these beautiful and interesting birds. Some species are abundant and some are quite rare, yet it's always a joy when we are lucky enough to see or hear them. <laughs>